Hello and welcome to Mikia. My name's Michelle Edhouse and I've just finished going live with you glorious, wonderful people. Um, and I had lots of fun and there's still a lot of paint left. Even after, after Sue um, rang me on Messenger and we picked the piece that she loved. Um, so I'm going to put this one aside and use the leftover paint because I've got quite a bit of paint still in here as well as all around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint one of these little ring boxes um, they come in packs of three and probably can big, buy them in bigger loads than that and they're very pretty but they're not me at all so let's get this party started oh where did it go oh my goodness magic <laughs> Ah, oh, the magic of cinema. Anyway, so what my plan is, is to um, take off the little bow and then paint the box. Paint, or pour the lid and paint the, just use whatever's left with a, um, a brush to pour the rest and I could these bows just come off so super easy they only seem to be stuck in by the ends of the um, ribbon just make sure you don't peel the paper back because that can show through Oh, this one's actually got a bit of a stick underneath the bow as well. Oh, that's annoying. Alright. So now we have our canvas. How do we keep it up so that it can drip? Well, I am going to use little shot glasses. Well, these are actually quite big shot glasses, actually. The gigantozoids. Um... These ones hold 70 mil, which is more than two ounce. It's, so you'd probably be able to put a double and walk with it in your hand if you're still walking but at that point. So I've got two of them because I've got two boxes. Well, I've got more than that, but I'm going to do these two. I think I should have enough paint to cover them both. So let's so if you want to go back and watch that live, it, it'll be in the um, in the acrylic pouring NZ Oh sorry, you can't actually see what I'm doing. But I'm just doing little tiny swirls. This one's got a lot of silver in it. Found the silver, everyone. I got these. Whoops. Okay, so this one's running off already. So let's stretch it out. just make sure we get paint down all the sides I've done these before and it is a bit of a knack to get the paint down all the sides but not on the inside of the box so once you've tilted it and got the top looking good, then go down and just swipe. Swipe down the sides so that the, the paint has information about where you want it to go. Sometimes you might want to pick up some paint off the ground if you've already been pouring something already 
see that's just going to run down those two points if I don't encourage it to go in other directions that's what water does it finds the easiest way to go whoop hug dogs oh well we've got a different look now look at that let's just finish wiping that it's very pretty sometimes your paintings have a point of view of their own as to what they want to be <laughs> so let's just get rid of those air bubbles this paint doesn't have any silicon in it so I'm not expecting any um, any silicon cells so for this one I'm going to do it slightly different I'm going to, before I start tilting I'm going to use some of my runoff off the table and um, just cover those sides and that way once I've tilted we're done okay now the colors in this painting are a burgundy that I made with cobalt blue and crimson red and they are silver and bronze and grass green all except for the crimson red are reeves um, and all of them are mixed with Floetrol and water. So I'm just going to have it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Now even if you look back to what that one looked like before I dropped it, they're such very different paintings. But both of them have sort of come out with like a flower look on top of them. How's it getting any better than that? I poured a circle. Okay. So now what I'm going to do with the bases is just, um, I've got a whole heap of paint over here. Check that out. So I'm just going to dip. Dip and turn, dip and turn, dip and turn. Um... And then I'm going to pop them up onto a um, pop them onto their own shot glass just to to drain. So let's do that. So we're just going to dip and turn dip and turn. Dip and turn. Just make sure that it comes right up to the edges. And then, whoop, see, look, I missed a bit. And you can 
can do this with any boxes. Make sure you do the bottom as well, otherwise it looks weird. But try not to put too much paint. This is this is a very important thing. Try not to put too much paint on the top edge, otherwise the box doesn't close, and it's annoying. It's got this beautiful box with a beautiful lid, and it doesn't close. Speaking from experience. So there it is sitting over on its little pedestal. Pop any air bubbles that that um, created. And let's do the other box. I can get that off there. And create something for that to sit. So we'll go back over and find another patch of paint. Uh, dip and dip and dip and dip. Look, I must have it again. Oh, running out of paint by the looks. Dip. That's better. And these are going to be shiny. Shiny, happy, happy boxes, yes. Because that's bronze and silver. All mixed in. What's that in there? A lump of something. Okay. And now let's take it over and pop it up on its little pedestal. torch the bubbles out. Done. All right. Now, we've still got some left in there. What should I do with that? Maybe I should do a rock. And then we can all rock on, man. <laughs> yes, I'm a weirdo. Okay, so I like to put things on things that I can then move with ease. Like I can pick, pick the boxes up. Because I work in a spot and it takes a couple of days to dry sometimes, especially this time of year. So I've got got this little rock that I found in my mother-in-law's garden and I'm just going to blue tack it to the top this I don't know if it will hold to the top of this tin you see that just so that it's up off the ground just that fraction okay and then I'm gonna just pour paint. There. Pretty, eh? Now, what I'm noticing is happening is I poured so much paint that that gap underneath the painting, underneath the rock, was not. Ugh. 
was not enough. And now I've gone and botched it. How do I deal with this? What question can I ask that will give me ease and clarity? Look at it, it's so pretty. What can I stick it on to dry? Ah, uh, questions, questions, questions. Yeah, but we've decided I don't know what to do. Let's get rid of that. And let's pop it on its own little pedestal. Maybe that's what its problem was. I'm not up high enough. I'm I'm worth a, I'm worth a throne as well. Alright. <laughs> How does it get any better than that? Okay, guys. Um, I still have paint left. This is incredible. All right, let's do another box. So I do another box? Yeah, I think I will. Just one more. Just one more. I'm going to bring you over here and then I'm going to pause the video while I prep the box. Okay, so I've got it all prepped. What I thought I'd do is use that dipping technique that I did for the bottom to do the sides because it will probably be a lot quicker. One of the girls on the live was saying you could um, dip tiles in your runoff, which sounds like a good idea. The difference with dipping of a um, something like this is you get what pops up. You don't get what you see on the ground. So let's pop that on there. And pour. And I'm just gonna do a slight different pour on this one. So that's more of just a straight pour rather than the spiral pour that I did on the others. That's funky. I like it. And let's... Just going to grab that and run it down there. I'm getting mucky, mucky fingers, trying to keep the paint from being on the inside of the box. It's not particularly easeful when you've got mucky fingers. Look at these. All right. I've got paint over there. Let's go for that. One, two, three. Uh, don't put your fingers in the stuff that's already painted, Michelle. Okay. I 
And just because it's there, I'm going to go into that as well. <laughs> ah, come off. Okay, well, I think I've used most of the paint. You know, sometimes you could keep going for hours and hours and hours. But I'm going to stop and tidy up. I have people coming for a class this afternoon. Um, so I kind of need to make a bit of space so that I... They can have a go too. All right, guys. I adore you and I will show you these all dry in three, two, one. Guess what? I'm going to show you something else before we go. And look at what how those dried. I'm going to show you how this dried. Yes, this is the painting as you saw at the very beginning of the video. Um that we did on the live stream I adore this painting I just it just so ah, speaks to me on so many different levels I just just really 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 love it how does it get better than this it's always my favorite question and to be really honest it's going to be hard pressed to get better than this. Look at this. Look at this. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. It's going close. You've got the silver and the bronze. Was it bronze or copper we used? Can anyone remember? And look at these. That's just luscious. What really gets me is these sharp pointy bits. It really has that sense of a rose where, although the, I, I, it's kind of like the spikes are on the edge of the petals. I don't know. What do you reckon? I, can't, I shouldn't say it. I don't know. I do know. I know what I'm trying to say. The one thing that is, okay, so I found a way that it could got, have got better. There's a, quite a few lumps in my paint. And... So if you guys see lumps in your paint, pull them out, because even the tiniest little lumps show up like giant boulders. <laughs> um, see, so look over here. Look at this incy wincy little lump, but yet it's. I suppose I could put it down to. Proof that it's a real painting. That's why I don't um, tape the backs of my canvases. A lot of people say, how do you tape the backs of your canvases? I don't. My interesting point of view is that's proof that this is a painting and not a print. So if you are ever in a secondhand store somewhere around the world in 20, 30 years time and you see this painting, turn over, check if it has the paint marks on the back and then you will know that's the original and it'll be worth millions by then I tell you it just <laughs> what would it take for me to be so famous that my paintings sell for millions in the future I'm willing to have that so let's move on hush Michelle moving on so let's have a look at some of the dips that we did uh, we've got that one now my brain is not on memory but I'm pretty sure that one is for Isla that one is for Kathy one of these two which I can't remember which one these are the ones that we dipped afterwards with Sue she called me on messenger and we picked some bits and uh, had some fun so Sue let me know which one of those two you want <laughs> then we've got the little earrings these are so cute 
Now I'm not sure whether I'm now getting into the stuff that I dipped with the boxes. I can't remember. I think this is with the boxes. So I really like this one. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it because it's it's quite funky. Look at that. And then that one is just delicious. Copper or bronze, whatever color we used. And then the crimson and the greens. It just looks like a mass of roses. It's so pretty. There we go. We've got the focus right. <laughs> so there we go. From memory, I, that these ones are already sold and these ones are still available. So let me know if you are keen for those. And let's have a look at our boxes. So this is the one I dropped. So this is the first one and I like it. I think it sort of looks like a flower of some description, maybe a hibiscus or a iris or something like that either that or a fairy or an angel and there's your white the white head face wings up to you now this is what i meant by don't put too much paint on because these boxes are designed to fit together as they are and it has slightly deformed having been wet so you do need to reform it they only just fit now because they've got paint on the box and some of you are like well we should really paint the insides make them look pretty uh i wouldn't because well you could paint the inside of this because that's not but don't paint the inside of this otherwise you're just not going to get the two pieces together so there's one which one do we do next i think we did this one next that's a funky one as well. Ooh. I see like a ghoulish cat with its two ears, its nose, or a fox kind of thing. And it's like waving its ghoulish arms at you. <laughs> um, and I love the way that the sides of these have really worked well together. They are the matching box, and got a bit of a paint drip there, but that's okay. They're cool. And then we've got one more. This is the one that I poured it all off, and I like it. It's funky. The box doesn't quite match as much on this one. It's a bit just sort of the brown, but I do like, I do like. They're funky, but it, as I see, as I'm showing you, it's quite firm. So the more you take the the lid on and off, the more likely you are to rub the paint off the corners of the internal box. So that's them. And the last thing to show you is my little stone. Did I show you that? Did I dip that? I don't remember. I'm shocking at remembering what I did in the video. It's like two, three days ago. Time is not real and I don't recall. It's not relevant. But it's cute. It's funky. I think I like that one better than I like the um, the pink one. How does it get better? So, that's been a lot of show and tell. A uh, bit of a long ending to the video. But I'd like to say thank you so much for joining me. I had fun on both these videos, both the live one and this one. And uh, what else is possible? How much more fun can I have? What can I paint now? <laughs> 
I don't know about you guys, but once you start painting and you start asking the question of what else is possible, which is my favorite access consciousness question, um, it just, everything becomes paintable. You can look back through my, my channel and find me painting on my son, find me painting on 3D objects, painting on all sorts of things. So, shoes, clothes, wallets, bags, breadboards, I, you know, records, you name it, I paint on it. So check out my other videos in the, um, in the Acrylic Pour NZ playlist at the end of this video. And uh, what else is possible, guys? What else is possible in your life and living that you haven't imagined yet? I adore you guys. Have fun and I will see you. Oh, oh, last, last thing. One last thing. If you would like to join me for the next live, sign up and check your emails regularly. <laughs> I had someone message me the other day, like a, a, two days after the live class, the live, and go, oh no, I just found this email. Uh, well, you need to check your emails every day if you want to actually get the notification because I only send them out 24 hours before. And what else is possible? How much more fun can we have? Okay, I adore you guys. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.